Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi, I'm a first year medical student, and welcome to Ovi Med. Alright, so here's my attempt at doing some timestamps, so there you go. Now let's get into the first topic. So, what did I learn during my first semester of medical school? So I had different courses, right? So I had human form and function, which is the big title of the course, which had anatomy and physiology in it. So in anatomy, what we did, we started with the upper limb, then we did the spine, pelvis region, and then the lower limbs. So this first semester was more focused on musculoskeletal system, blood vessels, and nerves. So what we did is for each region of the body, we looked at the muscles, their origins and insertions, their nerve supply, their blood supply, and then we look at the nerve supply of the skin, so the uh, dermatomes, and then we look also at the vessels of the limbs. Then we saw all the ligaments, then, well, maybe not all of them, but you know, a few of them. Uh, then we saw all the bones, uh, that was actually the first step. We looked at the bones and then the muscles, but yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, and we saw all the bony landmarks, so, uh, you know, like let's say of the humerus, you have the greater tubercle and the intertubercular groove, you know, you have muscles that attach there or, you know, tendons that go through there. And so, yeah, we looked at those and we did that for upper limb, uh, spine and lower limb. So then what else did we do? Uh, we saw a few clinical things here and there, uh, depending on the topic. So let's say when we're doing the wrist, uh, we saw like carpal tunnel syndrome. So that's when you have uh, like, you know, compression of the median nerve and that gives tingling in your fingers. Uh, you know, then we saw like tennis elbow, we saw like uh, ACL tears in the knee, uh, like rotator cuff tears and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but most of these were also seen during our PBLs, which I'm going to talk about just in a minute. So in physiology, we had like a few general courses at the beginning, like, you know, on ions, uh, channels, uh, you know, stuff like that, like uh, NEK, TPAs pump and how like resting mem membrane potential works and stuff like that. Uh, then we started to go into neuro. So that's where we saw like, you know, accents, nerves, um, their anatomy, how they work, uh, how those neurotransmission worked and stuff like that. Then we saw muscle. So, you know, in conjunction with the nerves, we saw the neuromuscular junction, um, how muscle is organized, you know, the sarcomere, the shortening, what happens, actin, myosin, troponin, you know, all that stuff. Then afterwards we did sensory perception. So we saw the ear and the eye and how, um, you know, rods and cones work and then the vestibular system and how the, you know, organ of corti works and stuff like that. And then we did hematology and there was a chapter on immunology inside of that, you know, all the blood cells, uh, how the blood groups work, how the immune response work, vaccination principle, uh, all that stuff. And then the last topic of physiology was endocrinology. So we saw a few glands, we saw hypothalamus, anterior pituitary, we saw the pancreas, uh, we saw the hormones and how they're regulated, the feedback loops and what their actions are, basically in the body, what they do. And then the next course that I had is evolution and life, which is basically biochemistry. So what we saw in that course was proteins. We started off with like, you know, amino acids and how they're bound together to form proteins, you know, uh, primary structure, secondary, tertiary, quaternary and how they work and blah, 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 stuff like that. Uh, then we saw the cell cycle. So what regulates, you know, what are the phases like, you know, S, G1, G2, M phase, blah, blah, blah. And then we saw carbohydrate metabolism. So, you know, glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, all that good stuff. Uh, then we saw lipid metabolism, you know, fatty acid synthesis, uh, beta oxidation. Uh, then we saw amino acid metabolism. Then we saw membranes, like how their fluidity is affected. Uh, what are the roles, you know, transmembrane proteins, uh, channels, transporters, stuff like that. And then we did uh, bioenergetics and the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. We saw oxidative phosphorylation, uh, which is, you know, the way the body makes ATP. And then lastly, we saw enzymes. So, you know, we saw like how competitive inhibition, uh, non-competitive, you know, allosteric sites, uh, all that stuff regarding enzymes. And that, I think that wraps up pretty much what we saw in biochemistry. And then the next course that I had was ethics and behavioral science. So the name pretty much says it all, ethics and behavioral science. And then last but not least, I had my TBLs, the problem-based learnings. So those were not courses per se. Uh, 
uh, through our like small group tutorials. We were uh, the 12 of us that are that are in our PBL group. And what we do is we have like discussions about cases and patients and stuff like that. And uh, what is nice is that mo often the things that we see in our PBLs are in conjunction with uh, what we see in the anatomy. So yeah, these PBLs are just a bunch of fun because you can relate like the theory that you see in class with some clinical practice and it just makes more sense, you know, when you see the theory because you know that it can apply like directly to some sort of clinical syndrome or whatever. So yeah, that's just really interesting. All right, so that was just a very, very quick summary of what my first semester of medical school looked like in terms of courses and stuff that I had. But now let's tackle the next question. Was my undergrad useful? Hmm. Yes, it was. Absolutely. 100%. Definitely. It was so useful. And speaking of which, uh, by the way, I just got back home. It, you've seen by the background. And if you looked at my previous week's video, which I'm going to link to right here, I explained. I just got back. So, yeah, go and check it out. But um, look at what I just got in the mail. Yay! That's my undergrad diploma. So now I officially have a bachelor's degree in biomedical sciences. And yeah, it's written in French. So if you don't teach French, well, that's what it's written. So yeah, I framed it. I'm gonna put it in my room. Uh, probably gonna put it behind my desk so that when I'm doing some videos, um, yeah, you can see my phone in the background. I don't know. I guess it's just gonna be nicer than just having a blank wall or having this wall. So yeah, anyways, but was my undergrad useful? Yes, 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 a thousand times. Why? Well, because most of the things I've seen now in my first semester of medical school, I've seen everything and so much more during my undergrad. I don't need to brag or anything, but it's just true. Um, the content that we see now in my first semester in medical school, I've seen them once in CJEP. Uh, for those who don't know what that is, it's like the equivalent of an extra year of high school, but then uh, our undergrads are three years instead of four. So it's like a transition year before high school and undergrad. Um, so I've seen that stuff once, okay, let's say high school, and then I've seen that stuff again during my undergrad, and then I've seen that same material again when I was doing the MCAT, and now I'm seeing that same material again in medical school. So really, if, I mean, it's not that big of a deal if you don't have an undergrad, I guess, because in some countries, if you wanna get into medical school, you don't need an undergrad, you can just go straight from high school, uh, which is the case like here in Quebec, or in uh, Ireland, at least where I'm going. So, so I don't think that it's like mandatory that you have an undergrad, but it's extremely useful because uh, you often see like in way, way more detail uh, the material that we see, like let's say like the Krebs cycle. I've seen that thing for at least like four or five times already now, which I'm honestly getting a bit annoyed, but I'm probably gonna see it again uh, every single year for the rest of my life and you know, it's just, it is what it is, but if you look at other courses like physiology, where you have like neuro or muscle, well, you know, I had a histology class, I had a full on neuroscience class, and I've seen like all the pathways, all the decusations, and all the nerves, and all the systems, and all, all the organs. So, especially if you have an undergrad like in a science background, like for me, biomedical sciences, where I have like physiology, anatomy, neuro, immunology, microbiology, histology, or I have like basically all the courses, I've seen quite a lot. and. I don't think that my experience is the same as a kid who just got out from high school. They're gonna have a much, much harder time than people like me who have an undergrad in a related subject. Even people who have an undergrad in an unrelated subject might have a harder time. They might have like more advanced study techniques, which could help, but you know, seeing the, the material once and then getting tested on it and then seeing it again, and now seeing it another time in medical school makes it just much, much easier and much relaxed. So I guess it gives you more time to like enjoy your experience rather than being stressed and overwhelmed with like all these new concepts and everything that you've just never seen before. So was my undergrad useful? Yes, 100%. And yeah, I'm really glad I chose uh, a science bachelor's degree because um, like I said, I've seen it most of the things that we see now. Um, if I would have done uh, something like physiotherapy, that would have been even more useful because uh, I would have seen all the musculoskeletal system. So I wouldn't be doing as much in anatomy because currently anatomy is pretty much the hardest course that we got. There's just so much material we gotta learn. Uh, I just mentioned like a few minutes ago, all the things I've gotta know. That's a lot of material. And I'm probably gonna look back at this video like next year and I'm gonna laugh at myself because I'm gonna have so much more material. I'm gonna laugh because that was nothing. But 
currently right now with my city techniques, which I might need to tweak a little bit, uh, it's a lot and it takes time. So yeah. So moving on onto the next topic. How did COVID-19 affect my medical school experience? So uh, I guess it affected it in many, many ways. Um, so first things first, my social life. Uh, well, I'm not gonna talk too much about that. You can just look at my video right here uh, because I talked about it in depth. But basically um, it was, it made things a lot harder because you can't really meet people the same way you just did before. So in terms of social life, eh, wasn't the best, but you know, you can just figure it out. Then in terms of education, um, is online teaching bad? Is it good? Well, there's pros and cons to both, obviously. Um, for me personally, I really enjoyed uh, online teaching. I think it's uh, sort of a relief because especially when you have these really hard courses and the teacher speaks really fast, uh, you're just typing down the previous slides, comments, and then uh, the teacher is speaking about a new topic and then you're like, oh crap, I didn't get time to write and then you get lost and then he moves on to the next slide and then you would have needed to understand the slide before and then you're like, oh my god, and then you're panicking and like, just lost the train of thought and then oftentimes uh, the things pile up on top of one another and so if you didn't understand the previous topic when you're not gonna understand what's gonna come in the next slide. So um, for me personally, being able to just press pause or rewind and listen to the material again. And even if there's something that I didn't understand, I can just pause, do a quick Google search and then continue the lecture, which is not something that you can do while the teacher is just blasting through the notes. So for me personally, I think that's just so much better. And I sincerely hope that all the lectures are gonna be recorded from now on uh, in terms of cons. Well, you don't have that same contact with people. Uh, you get to see less people, but due to COVID-19, you're not gonna see anyone anyways that you know, because it's only gonna be your group, your pod, of like 12 people plus another one that you like don't know. It's not like 200 people in the class because you know, you need to socially be distant and stuff like that. So, I don't know. For me personally, online teaching is very good. All right, and then final topic. Was medical school like I expected? Um, no, not at all. I don't think that anyone could have expected what was going to happen with COVID-19. So for sure, it wasn't at all I expected. Uh, for those who don't know, by the way, I'm going to Trinity College Dublin, uh, which is the University of Dublin for medical school. And yeah, I don't know. Um, first of all, I didn't know that I was going to be an international student up until like four months before leaving, because that's when I got my acceptance letter. So I couldn't really expect a lot because I don't really know what I was going into, really, like if I have to be honest. Uh, on their website, they don't have all that much information regarding like how courses go. I try to speak with a few uh, like older year students, but like until you get there, go to the courses and go to the classes, lectures and see what's what, you can't really have any expectations, can you? But you know, I certainly didn't expect to be in lockdown for the whole period that I was there. Um, I definitely expected to meet more people, but COVID-19, um, I did not expect to have so many people from Canada. Um, actually, there's two people or three actually from Montreal. So we're four um, that I know of uh, that are from Montreal. So that's just amazing, like mind blown. Uh, then from Ottawa, there are a few. Then from Toronto, there are a few as well. So yeah, we have like this little uh, Canadian uh, group. So that's really fun. And then from the States, uh, there's just so many students from there. I think they're like 20 or 30. So that's quite a lot. Uh, I don't know them all, but uh, I got to meet a few of them. So that's cool. So yeah, I just learned a few things about the university, like how the courses work. So uh, most of the schools here in North America work by blocks. So you see like cardio, then you have pulmonary, then you have microbiology, then you have psychiatry and stuff like that. But us, we have like a bunch of courses at the same time, uh, like you would have seen from a few minutes ago. So that was not what I expected really, because uh, I'm not used to, I've never heard really of medical school without blocks. So for me, that was just a completely new experience. Um, then for our exams, final exams, which are in January, uh, we're gonna have essay questions. And that's also something completely new that I've never really done before. Here in North America, we only have MCQs and ever so slightly some 
short answer questions, but really rarely, we only get MCQs really. So essay questions is like a big shock, you know, like three or four pages, you know, like an example would be like, talk to me about the clotting cascade. Like, what about it? You know, like, what do you want to know? Like, that's so vague, you know, I'm not used to that type of question. So I guess you just write out everything, you know, so it must take quite a while to correct, you know, whereas us, you just put it in computer and that's it, you know, you're done. But no, it really wasn't like I expected at all. I didn't really know what to expect either. But uh, you know, first semester of medical school is done. So yay, still have my exams in uh, three weeks. So that's that. So on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Write them down below. Uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do so. It's at ov.med. Uh, I post all sorts of stuff about my daily life and uh, you know, pictures of the campus and stuff like that, which is really nice. And you should definitely go and check it out. And then, I don't know why I did that. And then if you didn't see my previous week's video, I'm gonna put a link to them right here. So please go and check them out and see you in the next video.